Hey guys, this week a little bit different. Instead of rods and reels, I'm going to be taking on uh, electronics mounts in a bass boat. This will apply to whether you have a tiller, a regular aluminum boat, or a bass boat, or a walleye boat. It doesn't matter. I'm going to be installing today the Geiger Tech Extreme mount into the front of my 2021 Bass Cat Era. I'm going to be putting a Helix t uh, 12 Gen 4 on it. So I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. Very, very smart mount. The beautiful thing about this mount, it's got a one knob release that you can take your gear with you. I mean, we're putting thousands of dollars of graphs into boats now. Some guys, when they're running triples up front or doubles on the dash, you got to be able to get them out fast when you're on the road a lot. I end up at hotels all the time. Uh, if you're a tournament guy or touring or you have to leave your boat outside on the driveway, these can all be problem areas where people can steal your stuff. So very simply, uh, this is a great mount for quick removal, but by far the most secure mount on the market. This is billet aluminum handmade, very, very smartly designed by engineers who fish. And Brian Geiger is one of those guys. He does a great job with it. So uh, there's two mounts that you can go to. The one I'm using is the extreme mount. It's the bigger of the two. And the reason I'm doing that is it's really rated for 12 and 15 inch graphs, but you can put a 10 on it, no problem. Then they have a pro mount, which is a smaller uh, aluminum mount. And it is actually really nice, but it is designed for 10 inches and under. So 10s, 9s, 8s, 7s, 5s. It does a great job. So they fundamentally run the same way. You can get a two and a half inch arm or a three inch arm, depending what you're doing or how much space you have. On mine, I'm running a two and a half inch arm because the Bass Cat well is four inches down and it works perfectly. It's multiple adjustments, uh, tilt side to side, tilt up and down. You can adjust on the base as well. And probably one of the things I like most about this mount is the teeth. It's got a rosette style tooth. And again, we're talking billet aluminum super super strong but the teeth lock in and they wedge and they do not loosen so this is a big thing for us who run big water remember the bow of the boat takes the brunt of the punishment it takes the hardest hits and you know you don't want to see your electronics get shattered or worse yet come loose or the mount break and then end up in the water so these mounts take Lake Erie, Lake Simcoe, Lake Ontario, the St. Clair River, Detroit River, uh, you know, Lake St. Clair, all that stuff without skipping a beat. So let's go through the installation and we'll see how it goes. So here is the extreme mount and this is the middle section of it. There's a base that is in the boat that has actually a flange that you put underneath. But the big thing for me are these teeth. This is that rosette style billet aluminum tooth section. So your graph can move in, I believe they're 16 or 20 degree increments. And then you can adjust angle from here. There's teeth in here like that. There is teeth on this one. There is teeth on this one. And then even on the base plate, you can loosen and move that as well. So you can customize to get this thing to fit exactly the way you want it. No matter what configuration your boat is, no matter what you've got up there, uh, whether it's a tiller mount at the back and you want to watch your downriggers, or you want to have it on the graph uh, on your dash, or you want to put it at the front. Very, very customizable. That is the Geiger Tech Extreme Mount. So super convenient installation here on a Bass Cat here on all the Bass Cats. You can see here, once I remove the spacer for the trolling motor. I'm going to pull my trolling motor back further so I can remove this spacer. And then there is an access panel on the bottom of the trolling motor pedal that allows you access to underneath. And this is going to allow me to use uh, nylock washers, nuts, and bolts so that I can get the best possible secure mount for this extreme mount. I mean, the last thing you want to do is drive just screws into the deck of your boat they're going to come loose. So there is nothing more secure than a uh, bolt and a nylock with a washer. If you could do that, perfect. One piece of advice if you're going to be using stainless steel, which you should be using stainless steel, is get yourself some anti-seize. Uh, anti-seize is this stuff right here. You're going to want some of that because if you're using a drill especially to drive the bolts down, 
uh, you can actually do what they call weld the nut and the bolt together. So by using a little bit of anti-seize, that's going to go a long way and make sure you don't do that. I've done it a bunch in the past. You'd think I'd learn my lesson, but I actually bought a small jar of anti-seize. I keep it in my truck. Anytime I have to do an installation, I know exactly where it is. So once the access panel is removed, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out the flange, the top flange for the base, mark out all the holes, drill them. One thing you want to have handy is have a like a little vacuum cleaner handy. That'll save you from dealing with fiberglass dust, which if you're wearing short sleeves can get miserable, but also keeps the mess down in your boat. The last thing you want to do is fill your boat full of fiberglass dust. So mark them out, drill them, mount the base on it, put your screws in. Again, don't forget anti-seize on them. And then put the flange up underneath and thread your put your washer and thread your nylock nut on. Once you do that, you want to tighten one, make sure the flange gets up underneath super tight, and then go counter across from each other, kind of like tightening a tire. That's the way I like to do it, and make sure it's nice and secure. Once that's secure, then you can figure out how you're going to mount the actual extreme mount. For me, I'm going to turn it in on an angle. You can see what I've got here. It's a little bit of an angle there, and then I'm going to twist the top so that I can have the graph off to my right of my foot on the trolling motor pedal, but facing me. And that's what I want. I want to have a downward angle on that graph because I'm going to be using Hummingbird 360, Mega 360 on this boat. Uh, and I want to be able to have that big 12 inch showing me everything I need to see without having interference of the sun or wrong angle. This is a very, very simple way to do that. One of the great things about Bass Cat, back in 2016, I remember I got a memo and they said that in 2016, they were going from upgrading the wiring for the graphs because just then guys were starting to be more and more frequently running double graphs on the dash and then you know doubles up front and now with live imaging and you know mega live has just come out guys are running triples so in 2016 bass cat started running six gauge to the dash uh to a block and then from the block 10 gauge up to the front that made sure you had good power and it didn't get in the way now starting in 2022 Six gauge to a block in the dash, six gauge to the block in the front. And that's going to really make things really good for all you guys running multiples. You don't have to run a, an aftermarket power harness. It's done properly right at the factory. And it makes a big difference because when you have all that power being drawn, the longer the wires are from your cranking battery, uh, obviously the more chance there is for things to go wrong and power drain and power loss. So six gauge, huge upgrade in the Bass Cats for 2022. When it comes to wiring everything up, when you're using the wires, make sure you're crimping properly with a proper tool. Also make sure you're taping all your connections to make sure they don't rattle loose. Uh, that's one thing I try to do with everything I'm working on. I think of the worst case scenario. How hard am I going to be running this boat in? How rough will the water be? And when you're in a tournament or I'm filming or doing something like that, the last thing I want to do is have something not work, especially my front graph. It is my lifeline when I'm fishing. So tape, crimps, uh, good connectors, good tools, have all the stuff ready to do this. The last thing we could talk about is on the back of the Hummingbird. Once you have everything connected, uh, you will need some accessories. I'll show you what you need. If you're running 360, uh, you're going to need, I have a Mega DI trolling motor, the Ultrex. So you need an accessory cable. This is the Mega 360 Y cable. This is a seven pin Y cable. So basically this allows you to connect your trolling motor transducer and your 360 together and it'll tee off into one single output for your trolling motor transducer and your 360 into your units. This saves you from having to run extras. You can't do it any other way. If you're running Mega DI, you need this splitter here. The other thing, these pieces here come with your graphs. Uh, I'm running all helixes. I've been running helixes since they came out, I believe in 2014 or 2013. And every once in a while, I ended up having a bit of problems with this piece here. And it's probably because I remove my graphs so often. And if you get a pin on the inside, the pins are very small on the inside. And you can actually damage them by continuously in and out, in and out when you're connecting and disconnecting your graphs. What I started doing is not using this and I actually manually plug in each cable. So I'll plug in my ethernet with the dongle, 
I'll plug in my transducer cable, and then I'll plug in my power cable. There's really only three cables you have to worry about when you're powering up your system with Hummingbird. It's very, very simple. So the actual units, the cables that plug into the units are very snug and they hang on really well. I've been doing this for three years now and it's eliminated. Sometimes when you hit a hard wave, these would like bounce down and disconnect your graph. I don't get that problem anymore. So that's just my little tip. I'm not going to say it's the exact proper way to do it, but for any of you who are having problems where you're finding if you tap this, you're losing connection, try removing this and actually plugging in the actual plugs directly to the back of the unit. You'd be surprised how well it hangs on. It, they do, it does a great job. All right, guys, there you have it. That's our latest video on doing a bow mount electronics mount using Geiger Tech and Hummingbird. Uh, our next one, we're going to take on the dash of the 2021 era. So if you guys can do me a favor, click the subscribe button. That'll help get my vid videos into your feed. Uh, and I hope everybody's doing well. We'll see you next time.